Hi, I'm Georgia. I am from Jumo Creative and I'm a digital marketing strategist who wants to talk to you about value ladders today. I love value ladders because they're basically a way to help us make more money more easily in our business. So if that doesn't sound like something you want, you can tune on out uh, right away. But I think that might be something you are interested in. So value ladders are something you might have heard of. You might have done some work with them before. You might be familiar with them from Russell's.com secrets book. Um, there's a lot of things I'm going to refer to in there today. Um, uh, or you might not, you might not have any idea what I mean when I talk about value ladders. Either way is a okay for today. I am going to share with you what a value ladder is, who it's for, uh, who needs them, what it's good for, uh, what even the purpose of it is, like what's the benefit, why do we bother making value ladders? And I'm also then going to dive into some of the how, and I'm gonna share some of my favorite ways to actually build the value ladder and use the value ladder as well. So stick around to the end, even if some of the stuff at the beginning is just a recap, because we're gonna dive into some really fun tactical stuff towards the end. So value ladders, what is a value ladder? Uh, you might have seen a diagram like this before. If this looks familiar, this is a depiction of a value ladder. Basically what we're talking about is a visual representation of our products and services laid out in an order of ascending value. So as we provide more value to someone, as we give them a better service, we help them achieve greater results or, or faster results or whatever it is that, that we're doing. Uh, we can charge more for that because they're getting more in return. That's the general concept, right? I really love working with value ladders. Um, people also call them sometimes stairways to success. And I like that uh, because it is sort of a dual success. It, this is a stairway to success for my customer. If they follow this value ladder, I'm going to be able to take them from some perhaps low level services of mine, that they might only be able to access because of their budget or time or whatever other constraints. Um, initially, I'm going to walk them through this value ladder as we generate wins at each stage and we move them up through not just uh, sort of about trying to make more money from them from my perspective, but about trying to move them forwards in their business, trying to help them achieve more at each stage. So that's why it's their stairway to success as well as it's my stairway to success because obviously as I provide more value, I can get more back in return for that investment. So this is, that's essentially what a value ladder is. What you need to make a value ladder work are obviously a couple of different things that can go onto these tiers. There could be products, there could be services. I'll talk more about some of those things as we get into the how a bit later. Um, and you also need a way to stay in contact with your audience or with your customer base, because that's how you're going to get opportunities to kind of resell them in to new steps of the value ladder as and when they become ready for the next. So this continuity program is a key part of the value ladder. So that is what a value ladder is. Who, who, who needs a value ladder? What kind of businesses does it work for? I'll say as a quick answer, basically all of them. <laughs> there are a couple of things you need in place first and there are some little caveats. It does change for different kinds of businesses. So uh, I will just start by saying product-based businesses, um, info or education-based businesses, service-based businesses, subscription models, whatever it is, you can absolutely use a, a leverage a value ladder in your business. If you are an agency, style business or your sort of a, a service-based business that has lots of different pillars, perhaps other types of work that you do, or maybe you um, have a lot of different client avatars and you work in a few niches, you might need more than one value ladder. And that's a really important point that I want to make about this at the, at the get-go, is that I don't want you to feel like you should, you're restricted by this value ladder. Our goal isn't to make one clear path that everyone's gonna follow. In truth, actually, people are going to jump certain rungs of the ladder. People are going to come in at higher or lower points than each other. You might find that you have multiple ladders that kind of go simultaneously to different core offers or that you have different ways to get someone to the same core offer in the end. So your ladder ladders uh, might end up looking more like a web or like a spiral staircase or a crazy Harry Potter moving staircase scenario. And that's OK. Don't please don't feel um, like this exercise is something that you can do wrong and get boxed in by. Instead, I want you to kind of 
free yourself up to uh, accept it as just a way to find connections between your products and services and start drawing a sort of dotted line between the pain points your customers experience and what the, those problems look like for them and how you solve it, what your solution is and how you can communicate that and how you can just keep on providing more value and getting more in return as you really hone in on those problems and solutions and how you package it and how you communicate about it. So that's what a value ladder is and who can use them. Are you ready for a value ladder? Okay, if, yes, the answer is yes, if you do know who you serve, do you know who your audience is? And do you know how you help? So this doesn't mean that you have a full outline of all your services. It is okay if you don't yet know exactly what all your packages are gonna be or if you're sort of in half a mind to change them up. Don't worry. All you want to, to start with is who you serve and how you help them. Then you're gonna go through the classic um, avatar exercises where you map out their pain points and start brainstorming their struggles, their challenges, their hopes and dreams, and what's holding them back. Really, really important, the pain points, like what's keeping them up at night, what, what is the problem you're trying to solve for them, and what stops them from coming to you for this solution or buying the solution? What are their objections or barriers usually? Without those two things, pain points and barriers for the people that you serve and the solutions you offer, it's going to be really hard work to create a value ladder. So stick around today if you don't have those things in place, but just know that's a little bit of prep work you're going to want to do to get the most out of your value ladder. Um, also, you can start asking yourself things like, do I need a value ladder? Uh, yes, if I am struggling to raise my prices. Is that you? Are you struggling to raise prices? You can't get people in at the high enough tiers? Um, or uh, do I need a value ladder? Am I always reinventing the wheel? Do I feel like it's a big mission to come up with an offer or a launch or even a proposal sometimes? Does that feel like that's, that's difficult? Do you feel like it, you uh, are capped as to how much you can get your customers to spend with you? Your average sale price or your average lifetime value of a customer just isn't moving even though you're you know, creating new offers and things like that, you're still at the that baseline isn't shifting. If that's you, then I think yes, a value ladder exercise would be good too. Um, or what about the classic, I just have too much, too many courses and products and services and I've got downloads and freebies and cheat sheets and webinars and I don't know which ones are working well anymore, I don't know what they'll connect to, uh, I just feel exhausted. <laughs> if you relate to that, then also a value ladder is going to be great for you. So if any of that sounded familiar, then excellent, hopefully I can help you out some more today. Okay what and why and who for. Let's dive into the why just a little bit more and I've got something on the back to go into this. So I'm gonna make this a little bit of, game, of a game and you can try to guess what might be behind some of my stickers here. So these are reasons why it makes sense to spend the time to think through a value ladder and then also what benefit it's going to have for you later. So this first one, the little footprint is we can meet our customer where they are at on their journey. This is really key because it means that we can, if we meet someone and they're not quite ready for where we're charging in that maybe mid or high range, we can offer them something a bit lower down on the ladder. Maybe a DIY option, maybe some training, maybe some templates, maybe just a consultation and support, uh, something that's less involved for you. So obviously you don't have to charge as much, but maybe it's going to help them uh, get through to whatever is stopping them from buying your mid or high ticket. Is it because they don't have the budget? Let's get them some quick wins first. Is it because they don't understand the value or don't have um, the requisite sort of confidence and trust in place to, to feel like they need those high level services? Let's get them working through these lower level things so that they are, right? So you can meet your customer where they are at on your journey. You don't have to turn somebody away just because they're not ready. And likewise, you don't have to miss out on higher value services from someone who is ready, someone who's already got these things in place, they worked with somebody else, or they've been in business a while and they don't need some of that hand-holding, they just want someone to do it and they're ready. And if you've got a value ladder mapped out, you can spot where to place people a lot easier and meet them where they're at. All right, what's this one? It also helps qualify and condition your customers as they move through this ladder. So we can use our lead magnets to try to qualify and condition people and also our lower offers on the run. So by this I mean qualify maybe just the fact they spent money on you is a qualifying factor to start with. They're willing to invest. Um, 
if you set your rungs up so that they do flow into each other, then you know that you're going to be sort of turning someone into more and more of an ideal client as they work through that. So you're qualifying that they have the requisite knowledge that you expect or that they have the confidence and trust in you that you want and you're conditioning them to understand your process and to believe they need the next thing or whatever it is. So you can qualify and condition your customers to make it easier to convert at the higher rungs, which is that last one there. It improves your sales and conversions. It just makes sense. Now that everything's connected, it's so much easier for you to market and communicate the value. It's easier for the client to see that it is what they need. Uh, you're more likely to be able to close a sale when something is connected and it's on the path that someone's already taking. So let's bring this image back again to quickly go on into this in a bit more detail. What we don't want with a value ladder is to just sort of do a brainstorm of our products and services and then start grouping them into like low and, and mid and high price points. Because what we'll have then is just sort of a smorgasbord, like a buffet style thing that still doesn't help guide someone through their journey very well. So an example of that might be that um, as a digital marketer, I maybe have some things lower down on my rung that are audits or how, how to set up your Facebook page or optimize your LinkedIn profile or something. And I might have a checklist or a free training, short mini course, you know, $47, $97. Uh, imagine if at the high end of my rung, I was selling uh, gold standard video editing, really niche, amazing animated intros and outros and a professional grade videography for your content marketing. It's going to be hard for me to walk someone up to that point if they started off by just setting up their first Facebook page. Maybe instead things in my value ladder needed to be things like how to film a great welcome video for your audience or, or something else that's going to be more likely to be qualifying and conditioning my customers and my sales and conversions are going to improve if there's a logical connection. If I'm actually helping someone more with what they're already doing. I'm not saying shiny object, here's something else that you can also pay me for. I'm saying, I see you're on this journey to this goal. I can get you there faster. I can get you there better. I can get you there easier, whatever it is with the higher rung service. All right, what's this one? This is a little growth arrow because it helps us improve our lifetime value or average sale value per customer. So you're able to walk people up to those higher prices and also get people in at the higher tiers too. So that's a great benefit. Um, I'll say just once more on this one. This is one of the most common goals that someone comes to me with as a digital marketing strategist, as a business owner, sorry, approaching me as the strategist. They'll say, I want to improve my sales or my conversions. If I hear that and they don't have a value ladder in place, this is one of the first things I'll go back and make sure they do. You can see that a value ladder exercise is one of the lower rungs on my value ladder, right? Okay, this one, it also makes your marketing easier, it just feels effortless, it feels natural, it flows, there's none of this sort of scrambling for what should I talk about on social media or how can I, you know, find some, re meet my revenue targets to this next quarter, I need to find some sales somehow, what, what can I put out there? If we've got a value ladder and we can see what we're trying to get people to do at each stage, if we understand as well what their pain points are as they're walking up here, as if we can see once they've done X, Y, Z with me at this lower level, they've perhaps got my, my downloads, they've gone through my checklist, they've listened to my training, what's the next problem they're gonna face? Uh, possibly they don't have the tools to do it or the skills or the time to do it. So then you're going to solve that problem for them on the next run and they're all still going to be connected to each other um, and we're going to have a good understanding of what they're struggling with at each point and what they're trying to achieve at each point and that helps effortless marketing. Now we have tons to talk about and it's all aligned with our sales goals and revenue goals. Last one is just a little bonus. After doing your value ladder, you actually have this nice organized view of your products and services and little things that you can chuck in as upsells and downsells for different funnels and lead generation campaigns and whatever else. So that's just kind of a nice side bonus that you have easy access after this to things that could be um, one-time offers, OTOs, tripwires, lead magnets, and that kind of thing. So if I have sold you on how valuable a value ladder is, let's dive on into how to actually build one. So I'm gonna wipe this off 
and create some space to talk about the practical method of actually building out a value ladder. So we can build from the top down or from the bottom up, right? We have our value ladder. And somewhere up here, we have our highest ticket service. And somewhere down here, we have our free service. And we're going to want to be moving people onto the ladder. And we're also going to want to move people up through the ladder. So what do we put on our ladder? First of all, the answer is everything in your business has a place on a value ladder, one of the value ladders that you might end up with. So it doesn't matter if it's a done for you, done with you, DIY thing, if it's a subscription model thing or a retainer agreement, you might do projects, you might have physical products, you might have virtual things, event tickets, anything and everything that you offer in your business does form part of the web of value that you provide. So let's try and find where it fits on the value ladder. So start with that exercise, start with brain dumping and start trying to see things that make sense together. And then we can map out like this. Let's say we go from the bottom up. That's a really common way to do it because it's kind of natural. Like people often think linearly and uh, read right to left and count one to a hundred. So this is a quite common way to start. If we do start here, here's some questions we can ask ourselves to fill up the next rungs. If someone didn't have the time or skill to do why, why being a product or service somewhere on my ladder, then what could I offer to them instead? Um, or put another way, where does my customer get stuck next and what are their new pain points now? So taking an example from my own, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> taking an example from my own value ladder, we can see I have a marketing strategy service here where I create a whole roadmap for their digital marketing. Apologies for my terrible handwriting. Um, where do they get stuck next after I've done this, after I've made a great blueprint and a whole roadmap to everything they need to do? Wow, this is amazing, I can't wait. I, it's gonna work, it's brilliant, but I don't have the time, I don't have the skills, I don't think I have the knowledge. If I get my team to do this, I don't know if it will be done with the same standard as you would do it. Is it gonna be as effective? Um, I just want it done now, my team's busy. I, I, I don't think I can do this myself. Can you help me? Yes, I can offer you some done for you services. I might offer a standalone project or I might offer perhaps even an ongoing retainer up here. I might offer some ongoing VIP monthly amount where perhaps I even generate new lead magnets, new uh, lead generation campaigns once a month or quarter, create the content, fill up the landing pages, do the email nurture, Facebook ad campaigns, who knows what I could put in here. It would depend on what was in the strategy and what I thought they needed help with. So that's really powerful. If someone didn't have the time or skill to do something that I'm selling in my value ladder, well, what could I sell them instead? Where do they get stuck next? What are their new pain points? What could help them get an even better result? Or what could I bundle together for more value? That's a popular one I see at the very top of the value ladder, something like an inner circle membership, uh, a VIP coaching, and you get access to everything else often. You get all of the courses and things like that that the person sells piecemeal all bundled in at that highest price point. So if you're building up, these are some good questions to ask. Um, if you're building downwards though, you might actually be going the other way. And this is a little more strategic because we're going to end up with, we're going to end up in the place we want. When we're building from the bottom up, as much as it feels kind of logical and natural to start with, it can really quickly slow us down. We can start to lose our imagination or vision of where we want to go. And it can really just feel like quite a tedious process and often doesn't end us up where we want. Going in the reverse, we completely avoid that problem. We know everything's going to be strategically connected and make sense when we reverse engineering. So in that case, let's ask ourselves some of these questions. What gets in the way of people buying from me? Or what do they not understand or believe that I could show them or teach them? Or what do I wish people already had in place before they came to me? What would make it easier for me to do my job or just enable me to do a better job? I'm trying to think of all the things that the client should do or have or understand before they come and have, buy this service from me. 
An example here would be, I'm gonna have a really hard time coming up with a powerful marketing strategy if my client doesn't know their avatar or possibly doesn't have good messaging, uh, a breakdown, like a, a style guide or a brand guide or what their core messages are. It might make it really hard for me if they don't know their value ladder yet. So these are things that then I could say, don't worry, I can help you with these. And I could possibly sell individual pieces of this as a lower rung if they're not quite ready for this, or I could even put a custom bundle together that includes some of this work done as part of uh, perhaps a phase one of the marketing strategy. So if I'm looking at my ladder and thinking about what stops people from buying from me or what uh, makes, uh, makes it hard for me to do a good job, these are things that I can put lower down on my ladder. The last question was, what extra steps or services do you often find yourself recommending to people who aren't quite ready yet? So you'll have had those clients, right? They're just not quite the right fit. Try and figure out why. Is their budget too small? Do they just not have an understanding of what it is that you do so they don't value what it is that you're offering? And can you fix that up with some, even not your own office, even affiliate office, start thinking about how you could partner with someone perhaps and refer out for people who have not got certain things in place that you need. So don't think I'm suggesting that you have to fill every step of this value ladder yourself because it might not be your zone of genius. You might not want to do all of the things. That might not be where your business is headed but you can still map out your value ladder, see what those gaps are and find a way to complete that instead. Recommend, even if it's just a, a resources page and a, a qualifying quiz so that you get your ideal clients in and if, if they're not ready, they're not ready. That's okay too. So when you're filling out your value ladder, my guess is you're not gonna be doing it from the top down because you might not know what you want at your top. That's a really common thing all well and good if you know the end goal, but we don't always have that in place yet. So I think you're going to be doing a bit of both of these. You're going to be starting with some services you do have, you might've collected them and started having a bit of a shape, and now you need to fill down for where you can get more people ready to be ready to work with you. And you're also gonna to have to fill up so that you can continue providing value to people and uh, increase the return for yourself and for them with better services, different services, higher level services. Whew, so that's how to build it out. Start from wherever you're at, build down, build up, connect the dots, and constantly asking yourself, what are they struggling with here? What are their pain points? How do I solve it? Where am I trying to take them and why? And really make sure that your packages are aligned with that. Last but not least, once we have got a ladder in place, how do we use it? Whew, okay, well, long story short, we're basically getting traffic and we're directing it to entry points for our ladder. What that means is we're going to have a bunch of lead magnets most likely. You might have a few already in place that get people on, on your free tiers. All the lead magnets are the free tier. You also might want to look at some lead magnets that could bring people in at specific rungs. And when I talk about lead magnets here, I don't always mean freebies. So a lot of lead magnets are freebies, but the definition I'm using here is something that just captures the contact details of a lead. So if you're, if you're trying to get leads for these higher ticket services, then the bait might not be a free thing. The bait is probably one of these things lower on the ladder, right? But you could package it up as a standalone thing. It could have its own landing page, it could have its own ad campaign, or you could write a blog that, that drives traffic to it. So you can look at things that are lower down in your value ladder and make them entry points, a way for people to get a grip on your ladder. We also want to look at moving people through the ladder. So for that, I like to think about what sort of bridging offers I might give people here. And to be quite honest, it's usually the same as these things. I just might position it differently. So out here, I'm introducing myself and I'm offering something of high value. I want to make it feel like a gift and I want to give them a quick win and I want to get them ready to be everything I need them to be for this run. On these points, I've already got a relationship with them. So now it's perhaps coming from a different kind of place where this might be something I offer a quick little audit. I've got a template. I scan their websites and their social and I've got some kind of stock standard responses and I maybe make a short video that's a personal take with a couple of extra ideas. And that might be a small priced um, offer as an intro to a marketing strategy. 
for these people, I might actually offer them something more involved. I could offer them an actual call, something that we might do together. Uh, it's the same idea though. I'm going to be trying to do an audit. And I'm going to be trying to show them what the next steps look like. And um, here is where I love to introduce my little GRIP acronym. So this is what I use myself to try to keep me on track when I'm coming up with offers or lead magnets for my value ladder. Um, and what I remind my clients to keep thinking of as well. GRIP out. We're always trying to help someone get a grip on a ladder, right? So G is for gift. We want it to feel like we're giving them value. I know you know this one. That one's drilled into us. You want to give them a quick win. You want to get them excited. R is for resolve objections or remove a barrier. So we always want to be trying to do this as we go. The example I gave before was where someone doesn't have um, the ideal avatar in place. Rather than that being a barrier for them coming and doing a strategy with me, I can, oh, you can't even read that, can you? <laughs> um, I can offer that as a lower ticket service. I can use a lead magnet or a bridging offer to resolve that issue. I is for ideal client. We are always trying to transform people into our ideal clients by qualifying them and conditioning them as they go, building trust in us, removing false beliefs, helping them literally have tangible assets in place, ready to take action in the higher steps, and prepping them with budget, that's a tangible thing that they need for higher steps, but also prepping them with those intangible things, with beliefs and with trust and with confidence and, and understanding so that they can see the, the point of the stuff that we're doing up here and I can understand how it's gonna work for them if it is. And lastly, the point is always be trying to prime someone for the run prep them for what's ahead. So if there's something you can do to get them ready, like maybe I can offer something like five questions to ask your marketing strategist at your first consultation or something, I'm helping prep them for um, this ladder. Does that make sense? So try to think of grip all the time. You're trying to get people to have a good grip on your ladder, whether you're trying to get them in at the first point or move them up as they go. Your value ladder, um, lead magnets and rungs, and bridging offers or whatever you want to call them, think always about how they help give someone a grip on your ladder. Your traffic sources are gonna come from Facebook and Instagram, all your social media things, SEO, uh, content marketing, like blogs and YouTube and Pinterest, your communities, your students, your clients, uh, all kinds of places that can be a traffic source, paid traffic, free traffic. Your job is to be be attracting traffic, be nurturing an audience, be getting visible out there, and then driving that traffic somewhere. Where? To these entry points for your ladder. Does that make sense? I hope that starts building a clearer picture in your mind of how a value ladder works and how you can use it in your business. Just before we finish, I'm going to give you a real life example out of Russell's.com secrets book. So I'll just create a little bit of space up here and let's pop this over the top. All right, this is what Russell's value ladder looked like at the time he produced the dot-com secrets book. So uh, if you are interested in more about this, I would highly recommend you check this book out. I think it starts on about page 20 and he's got examples in here from other businesses, a chiropractor, a dentist, um, and then he goes into heaps more detail and actually talks about how the value ladder is the foundation for all the rest of the marketing concepts he talks about. So I firmly believe that too. Like I said, if someone comes to me with sales and conversions as a goal and they don't know their audience well and they don't know the value ladder well, I'm gonna start there before I promise them any great gains with sales and conversion. So Russell's, for example, with his value ladder uh, for his dot-com secrets or for his click funnels, he might get you with a free quiz to start with. In my case, it was actually this free plus shipping. This free book plus shipping. I heard about this through one of his affiliates, through my mentor, Rachel Peterson, who's put BossCon together for us. She told me about this book and I went and bought it. I paid zero plus shipping. Then because of reading this, I'm way more likely to be interested in Russell's Invisible Funnel webinar. So then that would move me up to the next step. After watching that webinar, I now understand more and I'm more excited and I have things in place and I'm ready to go. I'm an ideal client for him to pitch his home study, his training courses, or his live events like Funnel Hacking Live. 
people who go to those things or pay for those things are then prime candidates for potentially his inner circle or his high level coaching program. And all the way through this, he's got his ClickFunnels software, SaaS being software as a service, and he's using that as a way to maintain a relationship with his people, plus his email marketing, plus the community groups, so that he can try to hook them back in to the ladder whenever it makes sense. So that's a really good example of a value ladder. There are tons of great examples out there. I would love if you want to share any of yours, if you have questions, I want to hear them. If you found this helpful, please let me know. If you want to geek out about value ladders, then connect with me. Um, I am Georgia from Gmail Creative. You can find me on Facebook and LinkedIn or hit up my website. And absolutely check out .com Secrets if you want to dive into value ladders some more. And please do get in touch because I really mean it. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much, guys, and good luck getting a grip on your value ladders. <laughs>